Hello and welcome to uh, lesson number nine on Unity 3D with C Sharp. And this is on floating point variables. Uh, and as we'll see, floating point, point variables are very important. So what I'm going to do, getting right down to it, I'm going to go and make a new C Sharp script. I'm going to call it my float, F-L-O-A-T, hit the enter key and bring it up here. And whoops, double click. And there it is. Let's do a very quick review. Do you recall that if I had an integer, and let's say my integer was x, and I initialized it to some value, say the value of 0, and then I went and I did this, and I said x is equal to 1 divided by 3, and then I went and I printed the value of x, do you recall what I got? Let's test, let's check it out, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this, close it. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run it. And uh, I don't get anything. Why don't I get anything? Let's have a look. What did I do wrong? Oh, I didn't assign this to anything. So let's assign my float to the main camera. And let's try it again. And I get a zero. Well, I know there's something wrong with that. And as we recall, um, a, a, uh, an integer cannot show a decimal number. This should be 0 0.3333333 and so on and so forth. In other words, it's an irrational number. What we're going to look at now, we're going to look at floating point numbers that will give me decimal point values. This is very important in using Unity. Uh, because if you want to use the GUI, the graphical user interface, and sliders, uh, they use floating point numbers. So let's see what floating point numbers can do for me. First of all, let's look at the integer. Here's the integer. The integer does have a range of values. And I'm going to just copy and paste them uh, so that I don't bore you with typing the thing out. And I'm going to paste it right in here. And the range of an integer is from minus 2,147,483,648 to plus 2,147,483,647. So it has quite a range, although it could not really be used to represent our national debt could not really be used to represent our national debt because it's, it would be too small a number. So let me just go ahead and take that out. What I want to do now is I want to have a floating point number. And I'm going to call it F-L-O-A-T. And I'm going to assign it the value of Z. And so this right here is a floating point number. And I need to initialize it. Now, I could initialize it to 0. And um, let's see what happens when I do that. I'm going to come up here and save it, then close it, and then go ahead and do something. And um, uh, it it says the reference script is missing. Something's missing. So let's see what's missing in it. Here's what's, what's missing. Uh, what I need to do when I have a floating point number, I need to always put a decimal point in it. And I always need to make it followed by a letter F, either a lowercase f or a capital uh, F. If I don't do that, this will not behave like a floating point number. Sometimes I can get away with it by setting this to zero. Sometimes I can get away with this uh, without using the F. But if you don't set it this way, you'll start having problems in Unity. And a lot of people give up on using um, C Sharp because they don't understand how, how to do this. This is all you have to do. Let's try it now. And what I'm going to do is let, let me print let me print something out and, and see if I get what uh, P R I N T and let me print out what uh, what Z is. Okay, all right, here we go. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. Close that. And I'm going to go here, and I get a zero. Okay, as I should. Now. Let's say what I want to do now is I want to find out what the value of z is equal to 1 divided by 3. Okay? Now, theoretically, that should give us the 0.3333333, the irrational number. Well, let's see if it does. Okay, I'm going to come here, save it, close it. I come over here and I run it. And what do I get? I get 0 again. 
Well, I know that's not right. So what's happening? What's going on? Well, what's going on is that I use two integers. This is an integer, this one, and that three is also an integer. And if I, even though I assign this to be a data type float, it's not behaving that way because I gave it integers to divide. So what I have to do is I have to do this, a 1.0F, and I have to come over here to the 3 and do a 3.0F. Now I'm ready to use a floating point arithmetic. So I'm going to save this, I'm going to close it, and I'm going to go ahead and run it. And there I get, I get 0 0.3333333333 uh, up to seven places. And let's see what a, um, what a floating point number can do. A floating point number can do this. I'm just going to copy and paste this from here. Okay, and this is what a floating point number can carry. It can carry this. A floating point number can go plus or minus 1.5 times 10 to the minus 45 to plus or minus 3.4 times 10 to the plus 38 with seven digit accuracy. And that's what we saw on the output there. We saw that we had seven point, uh, three, 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 threes out there. So what's important when I'm doing a float is that I always have to use this kind of notation. Use a decimal point with at least one digit behind it and follow that with either the uppercase or the lowercase f. Okay, what I want to do now is make believe that I put a value here for x, which is an integer, I made a value of 3, okay? And what I want to do now is I simply want to take z, I'm going to comment this out here, I'm going to comment this, uh, this particular application out. Let's say I want z to be equal to um, uh, x plus 5, okay? Now, in this particular case, what I should get in an answer here, I should get an 8, right? Okay, let's have a look. I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this and I close it and I'm going to run it. And what happens? I get an 8. No errors. However, however, if I did it that way, initially I would start getting errors. What I need to do is I need to take this x and I need to convert it to a type float. I need to cast it to a float. And I do that like this. F-L-O-A-T. And I do the 5 as this. Now if I do it this way, because this is a float, so I need to cast the integer to another data type. And I do that by inside parentheses, typing the data type I want to cast it to, and I make sure this is also a float. Now, this formula will work in all cases in my, uh, in my game for whatever I'm using them for. So if I do this, and I go back to here now, and I see, now I get the 8 again. So as far as what I've seen, it looks like there, there hasn't been any error, um, but there would have been down the road. What I'm going to do now is let's say that I want to have x is going to be equal to uh, a value of z, and I'm going to set e equal to some value, and I'm going to put that z plus 5, comma. And x is of data type integer, isn't it? And I'm going to set z equal to a 3.0. Okay, so z is now a 3.0. So what I've got is x is equal to 3.0 plus 5. I've got mixed data types that I'm working with, and that is dangerous. Let's see what happens. We're going to print x out here now, and let's see what happens to the value of x. I'm going to save it. I'm going to come over here and close it, and already I get an error. And it says that it, it can't do that, basically is what it's saying, that there's an error on line 12. And this is line 12. What I need to do is I need to cast this to a type int. And I leave it, I leave the 5 this way because that is an integer. And the reason why I needed to cast this to a type int is because the result is x is declared as an integer. 
These are no longer mis mixed data types. So let's go ahead and try this. Okay, save it and I close it. And I'm going to go ahead and run it. And I get, I get my 8 now. And I do not get the error. Okay, so what's important is that when I have mixed data types, I must convert them by casting uh, them to the same data type as the result is expected to be. Uh, what I've done is I've talked, I've reviewed what an integer was. I've talked about what a, what a float is. To have a true float, you honestly need to do it this way. And if you don't do it that way, uh, and you need to do it this way here, and if you don't do it that way, even though you may not get compiler errors, you're going to get arithmetic error, errors uh, potentially somewhere in your code when your code starts becoming more complex. Okay, uh, that's it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching.